So right now my train is not too beautiful yet because till now I mostly work on my train mesh itself. And this is the smallest piece of my train. It is a 32 by 32 meter train chunk. If you look at the right side, it is written train size one by one. The unit of the size in my train is 32 meter. Also, if you look at the side, you can see some information about my scene. Right now, I have two objects in my scene, which one of them is my train chunk and other one is the player mesh. And I have two draw calls. Also, the number of the primitive indices is around 1,600. So let's do something crazy. I put the train size to 1,000 by 1,000. And if you do a simple calculation, it is 32 kilometer by 32 kilometer. This is already much bigger than many open world games. Also, we need 1 million piece of train chunk or 1 million object to create this train. So let's do that. Now look at the number of the object and the number of the draw calls. Number of the object is around 200, 300, which is not even close to 1 million, which we talked about. The number of draw calls is around 37. Also, the number of the primitive indices is around 1 million, which for a train with this size is acceptable. Now, if I move, you can see the level of detail of terrain adjusts itself based on the distance to the camera. I can show you that better by activating wireframe. One important thing is that you don't need to see all the way up to 32 kilometers. Here we have another parameter that we can adjust up to which point we want to see the train. If I put that to 20, for example, you can see as I move through my train, new train automatically will generate it. And considering that, if you put your original train even 100 km by 100 km, there will be no problem. So here, if the player is on ground, max range amount of 100 is more than enough. 100 means around 3 km, which is enough. Okay, now let's see how this thing works behind the scene. If I remove the material, a kind of debug material will be shown. So each of these numbers represent the LOD level of each chunk. LOD0 has the higher density and LOD4 has lower density. As you can see, the size of each chunk is also different. Basically, the size of the chunks which are closer to player is smaller. This is really important because the chunks which are closer to player have more vertices and we want to call them as much as possible. This is why they are smaller. And as you can see, as I move player, everything adjusts itself compared to the player position. Also, if I deactivate this debug texture, you cannot notice that the chunk are merging and changing. You can see that everything seems normal here. One important thing is, if I go up, you can see we have chunks with less vertices. And it is really reasonable if we increase the max range with the camera height. So let's take our original material back. Here I wrote a small piece of code which is going to change the max range with height of the camera. So here as I go up or down, you can see the max range is changing. So the thing is that the max range is not something fixed during the gameplay. You can change that as you like. I wrote this with C++ in GD extension and all of this calculation is done in a separate CPU thread so it will not affect FPS. Also, I don't think it is possible to write something similar in GD script. For this kind of thing, you definitely should use the power of the C++. I will publish this as a free plugin in following weeks. Uh, I'm still working on this because I want to add some more stuff to this and debug this work. And also, I try to create a video which explains more in depth about the algorithm behind this. Uh, but uh, still, I don't know if this can be used for real project yet. Definitely, this needs a lot of testing and we will see about that. So, thank you for watching. Have a good time and till the next video. Bye.